Coming up on Money, why is the U.S. about to help send Egypt billions of dollars in fresh aid when President Morsi is becoming a dictator before our very eyes? I don't understand that. We're going to talk about why that money might be better spent here at home. What do you think? Breaking news right now related to the Middle East. The United Nations has voted to recognize Palestine as a sovereign state. This just happened a short time ago, so they did vote yes to recognize Palestinian statehood. This as violent riots in Egypt continue. And President Mohamed Morsi addressed the nation today to try and explain his rationale for morphing into a dictator, basically. Here's the thing, though. Just last week, Morsi secured a preliminary agreement with the International Monetary Fund for $4.8 billion in loans. It was a signal that Egypt is ready to tackle economic reform. But the U.S. pays billions towards the IMF fund, and I'm not sure why we should be contributing to that loan. Joining me now is Zudi Jasser, author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam. Zudi, welcome back to the show. Before we talk about nice Egypt, you. let me get you to react to this vote out of the U.N. on Palestine and tell me what it means. Well, I think, if anything, the timing is just really bizarre, Melissa. I mean, here you have the U.N. again proving how out of touch it is. You have Hamas claiming supposedly victory when Israel had finally responded appropriately to having missiles thrown at it for months. You have the president of Egypt now claiming that Israel was a terrorist state and claiming he brought peace. So now you have not only his state leadership in Egypt, but he's claiming regional leadership and Israel's left now having to recognize a state that is run by a terrorist organization that the United States will not even recognize yeah. because there are terrorist groups. So you say that it's that just a very bizarre it, it, Is it setting. bizarre or is it, you know, on purpose and very specific? Well, it's on purpose from the UN and it's on yeah. purpose from uh, individuals there that want to legitimize Hamas's reaction, do this moral equivalency dance. Right. And unfortunately now it's becoming a, a normalization of Islamism as an ideology that it's not just the brotherhood wing of Hamas that's a threat, but now we should start to see the, the regional threat of Islamism from Egypt and what we're funding. So meanwhile, I mean that brings us right into the rest of the discussion, meanwhile as the tide is turning around the world it feels like or the sand is shifting beneath our feet, we are sending money to the IMF, who is then turning around and giving these loans to Egypt. Does that make sense? It really doesn't. And Melissa, it's so good that you're bringing this up, because if you look in history, every dictatorship, whether it's the Nazis or others, they have been able to come to power through so-called elections because they brought economic stability. The people are back in the streets now in Egypt for Revolution 2.0 because they didn't really elect uh, Morsi. He won 25 percent and then won a runoff. Now they're coming back because of economic instability and the IMF is actually giving him the, the feasibility to stay in power and give them that economic stability that if they didn't have, if we would, we not only the United States needs leadership from President Obama to say that we're not not only going to stop the one billion plus that we give them in direct aid, but to say to the IMF, which I think will stop the loan, to say that we're not going to support it, and Barclays and others who are already very afraid of sending money to a very unstable country will pull back and allow the Islamists to fail because in the long term they're going to turn into a Sunni type Iran in Egypt, which is certainly not going to be a friend. And just looking at this, I mean, it's a $4.8 billion loan. We just put that up on the screen. But the U.S. is responsible for 17 percent of the fund and what goes on there. So 17 percent of that money, in theory, is coming from us. Do you really think that someone here in the U.S., I mean, President Obama hasn't been very tough on these things. Do you really see him standing up and saying, you know what, we're not, we're out? Well, he has to listen to the American people that I can't believe in, in looking at national security and looking at the evolution of who our real friends are in the Middle East and the Egyptian people would stand to allow our president to remain silent as he has. He's been silent and it's not the right time for us to stay silent. All it needs is words to the IMF because the, the spokesperson for the IMF just today said they're looking for assurances that the EU and the United States will stand behind these loans. And if they don't get it, in their meeting on December 19th, I think they'll pull out of it. Yeah. And that would be one of the ways to oust Morsi and get real change for liberals that are the ones marching in Egypt, not these thugs and theocrats that are running the government right now. Zudi, real quick before we go, because we're out of time, why should Americans care about this? I mean, why is this our fight? If you look at the seeds of change that are going on in Egypt, you look at what's going on in Palestine and Israel, why should we care about this? 
because there's global, it's not just regional, it's global. The economic impact of the cash-heavy petrodollars that are fueling a regionalization of Islamism will eventually come back to haunt us because we live in an economic global village that free markets are on the wane and we have to have power to help the people establish individualism. That's why it'll come back to haunt our pocketbooks and haunt our security. Terrorism is still a threat to this day. Zudi, thank you so much for coming on. Always appreciate it. Thanks, Melissa. Anytime.